You're listening to Parents You've Got This, the expert guide to parenthood. The complete guide to pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. Whether you're a new parent navigating the world of feeding for the first time or you're a seasoned pro and you're just looking for some tips and tricks, well, today's episode is for you. We're talking all about expressing and bottle feeding today with our lactation expert, Rowena Gray. Rowena Gray is an international board certified lactation expert. She is also a midwife, a mum of three and a published author. Thank you so much Rowena for joining us today and sharing all this information with us which is going to help so many families. We thought we'd start out today talking about bottle feeding. Why would we need to feed our baby a bottle? So there's varied reasons why mums would express their milk and and give a bottle feed. Um, Perhaps the baby's been unwell in those early days and she might need to express to get her milk coming on. Um, One of the most common reasons is for mum and baby to be separated. So whether that's mum's at a wedding for the day or she's returning to work or returning to study and she knows she's going to miss a feed. So she might be expressing um, to, to give a bottle of milk for the caregiver to give to the baby. Those are the most common reasons. Are there ever reasons um, why a mother might not be able to breastfeed and might have to bottle feed instead of breastfeeding? Yeah, um, again, those reasons could be really varied um, or it could also be a choice that 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 mother makes as well. So breastfeeding is a very natural thing, but it's not always easy for some mums. So um, some mums might be expressing because the latch is so painful and uncomfortable, really damaging to her nipples. Um, Often mums will rest their nipples um, and just be pumping their milk and feeding their baby by bottle um, to let those nipples heal. Or some mums might actually choose to express their milk and give a bottle for whatever reason reason that might be. Um, Some mums just don't feel confident or comfortable having the baby on the breast um, and that becomes a a good option for them. Um, But there are many reasons to to express and bottle feed are varied and choice is actually one of them. And so if you are bottle feeding, do you have any tips for parents out there? It's really important to um, mimic the baby's feeding rhythm in terms of bottle feeding. So there's no set time, there's no set volume that baby must have each and every feed. If that baby were feeding directly from the breast, they'd be feeding to their appetite and the volume that they take, the time in which they take it will be very varied. Um, So when it comes to expressing and bottling, mum really needs to be mimicking the time that that baby would naturally feed. Um, So perhaps someone's giving the bottle and mum might be expressing at that same time. Or in the situation when mum's at work, that can be a little bit tricky. Usually the baby's a little bit older um, and the trickiness is in her work commitments and whether she can get that break uh, in and around the right time. Usually within about an hour of the baby's natural feeding rhythm is, is a good time to be pumping. And when the baby is older, they will have a better rhythm to their day so mum will know roughly what time of day she wants to be doing that Um, and depending on the age of the baby she might be pumping once a day in her work day she might be pumping two or three times a day so just trying to juggle um, all of that can be a little bit of a challenge yeah what are some of the reasons that um, you see mothers needing to express Um, So as I said before, often the the damaged nipples in the early days, just to get a little bit of a reprieve, perhaps like a reset button so her nipples can heal and then she can try again on less damaged, less excruciatingly painful nipples. Um, Separation of mum and baby is a big one. Um, It could be babies unwell, maybe mum is unwell and needing um, hospitalisation or um, being separated from baby for some particular reason. Um, I've, I've supported mums to, to bottle feed um, when they've had to um, go and have certain treatments in the hospital. They knew they'd be away uh, or having surgeries of kinds. They knew they'd be away and so they're pumping. Um, they can't have their baby with them necessarily. Um, but returning to work or returning to study or having a, a long period of time away from your baby, such as you, you're in a wedding party or you're going out for a wedding, um, those are kind of the most common reasons why mums would express. And what sort of pumps are available? I know there's so much choice around um, how, you know, how do you express different ways. Mm. There are great pumps available um, and there's more and more being developed now actually. The the latest and greatest is the hands-free pumps um, which are kind of um, hospital grade strength pumps. 
Um, so there's many to choose from. You only have to walk into baby bunting and be completely overwhelmed with all the options. Um, so one pump might work great for one mum and not be so awesome for another. So it is about you asking other mums, asking your lactation consultant what's what's available and what's what's good. But what's most important is the reason why you're pumping and, and the pump that's going to help you meet those needs. So if you're just pumping now and then, you might have a hand pump or you might have a small hands-free pump or you might borrow a friend's pump. Um, but if you're pumping regularly, if you're pumping to increase your milk supply, if you're pumping every feed for your baby, you want something that's going to um, it's going to do the job for you and it's going to work well every single time. Um, and what's also important about pumps is making sure it fits right. Um, yes. You want it to do the right job. It's not a one size fits all. Um, and you want to make sure that that flange size is correct. So if it's pinching or rubbing your nipple or really sucking in your, your nipple and your areola and really uncomfortable, the size isn't right. It's also, if, you, if you're having it too small, it's like trying to draw your milk out through a straw. So in terms of the effectiveness of that pump, it's not doing a great job for your milk supply and it's certainly not giving you any comfort. In the same way, if it's really, really big, it's just going to suck your whole nipple and your areola in and not actually um, draw the milk. So making sure that the size is right and the sizing, uh, if you buy a pump, um, you can get sizing. You hop online and, and look at how to size the, the flange that's right for you. And mums too can find that one breast has a completely different size to the other because our nipples are not exactly the same. So that can be quite common to have one pump, one, one size flange for one breast and something completely different on the other. <laughs> what about um, the best time to pump, Rowena? Is there a particular time of day when it's best for mums to pump or you know, should they be doing it at usual feeding times or what would your recommendations around that be? So again, this is all depending on why you're pumping in the first place. Um, but in terms of mums who are perhaps trying to increase their milk supply, uh, our hormones are starting to increase late in the evening. So around 10 p.m. is a really great time to pump when you're trying to boost your supply because your hormones are naturally increasing and we're kind of jumping on that bandwagon to really get a boost of the hormones. And then overnight, mums are very busy milk making machines. Um, so much milk production happens overnight because our hormones are highest. And so first thing in the morning, mums will realise that their boobs are the fullest and the biggest baby has their biggest feed at that time of day and then their biggest nap so pumping after that first morning feed is also really beneficial when you're trying to boost your supply because the more milk you remove from the breast the more milk you'll start to produce so late at night and first thing in the morning are really key and then pumping if you're pumping for each feed for your baby following your baby's natural rhythm um, or if you're just getting wanting to pump Say you're going to a wedding and you want, say, two feeds to give your baby. You might pump to prepare for that day. So it won't, might, might not be after every feed. It might not be every day. But you would just pump here and there to get a little bit of milk and store it for your baby for the time that you know you're going to be away from them. And how do you know how much they need for that feed? Like, how do you know how big... And how much, how yeah. many times you need to pump for? Yeah. You can't see it coming out. Yeah. And that, that's a good question, Christy, because babies, obviously, depending on their size, they're going to need a different amount. So a tiny baby might have, you know, 50 or 60 mils and a, a bigger six-month-old might need 120, 150, 180 mils. So it does depend on your baby. Um, and just ask your health nurse and they'll be able to calculate it for you based on the baby's weight as to what you would expect them to need because um, it is going to be different depending on the age of the baby yeah what about sterilizing Rowena how do you go about sterilizing a pump and how important is it and do you have to do it for the whole time that you're pumping how does all of that work I wish every mum who uses a breast pump knows this you do not need to sterilize your breast pump or any of your breastfeeding equipment and most mums go oh my goodness this is going to change my life <laughs> so obviously you get the pump out of the box you sterilize it for the first time but there is no need at all ever to sterilize pumping equipment every time you use it. So um, it's like your breasts are not sterile. If you put your baby directly on your breast, you're not sterilising your breasts every time. Similar kind of idea. And because there's only really good bacteria in breast milk, they don't go off, they don't create illness. So you can have a little bit of breast milk just kind of resting on your pump or in the inside of the bottle and it's perfectly safe to, to pump again. Um, and 
if mums are trying to build up their milk supply or, or get a certain amount of milk in a bottle to store for um, a time when they're going to be away from their baby, it might take them two or three or four pumps to get that volume that they need. So mums can actually pump into the same bottle for up to eight hours because you can leave breast milk on the, on the bench less than 26 degrees um, on the bench for up to eight hours. So if that mum wants to pump two or three times at two or three hourly intervals, she can just leave it all set up, use it again and leave it there. After eight hours, just pack it all up and put it, that milk in the fridge. Um, so we don't need to be washing and sterilising after every single time. And for a mum who might be pumping every two hours or power pumping or um, needing to pump so regularly, that is a game changer in terms of having some life back and enjoyment with their baby instead of sterilising everything all the time. And no stress. If I haven't sterilised this, what's this? What's going to happen? Well, absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's very safe to use. So I say to parents, if it's clean enough for you to drink out of, it's clean enough for your baby because your breast is not sterile. And then so do they just do it once a day? So just once in 24 hours. So hot soapy water, rinse, drip dry and it's ready to go. Some mums like to uh, rinse in between because just the milk residue is, doesn't feel right for some mums and that's perfectly fine. But you can, you can leave that milk residue there and it's perfectly safe to use again. And you mentioned power pumping before. What's mm -hmm. that? So power pumping, there's many ways you can go about pumping. Um, mums who are trying to boost their supply might try power pumping. And that's where you would pump for 10 minutes, take a 10 minute break, pump for another 10 minutes, take a 10 minute break. And you just keep going for an hour, an hour and a half or so. And the idea is that you're boosting your hormones significantly, giving your body a huge kind of surge of hormones and stimulation. And so hoping that your milk supply will follow along. So there's a whole lot of different ways that you can boost your supply. Power pumping, I wouldn't recommend for a mum who's just trying to pump the milk out for her baby because she's at work. There's, there's time and place for different ways in which you might pump. So again, finding a plan that's right for mum and bub. What are the um, most important things that you want people to know about expressing? So one of the biggest thing is it doesn't need sterilising. Yes. That's, my, that's mm -hmm. my big thing. Save your life, save your time and have some time for your baby. Um, another really big thing is just because you're breastfeeding does not mean that you should need to pump at any time at all. Um, it's not something that you must do just because you're breastfeeding. There, there is a, a time and a place for pumping. But if breastfeeding is going really well for you and you don't have any reason to pump, don't feel that you should be doing it at, at some point. So it's not something you can go your entire breastfeeding career having never touched a pump that is that is possible yeah and my big one from personal experience is that you can get a double pump don't just pump one side <laughs> and then use the same and pump the other you can do it at the same time you that can. was a big learning curve for me double pumps can be great um, and some mums find that double pumping is not as effective as single pumping so really I encourage mums to try both and see what they find is most beneficial for them Absolutely. So I think the take home advice is, you know, if you are going to express, you know, make sure you contact a lactation consultant and find a plan that's right for you. Thank you so much, Rowena, for sharing your time and expertise with us today. My pleasure. Big thanks to Mustella for sponsoring this podcast. Stay tuned next week for another episode of the Expert Guide to Parenthood podcast. And never forget, parents, you've, you've got, got this. this. Join a Parents You've Got This Masterclass today to be prepared, excited and educated for pregnancy, birth, baby and parenthood. Visit www.parentsyou'vegotthis.com.au and sign up for a masterclass today.